the topic I'm gonna cover in this video is probably the most important one when we talk about visual programming languages, that is order of execution. How do we trigger events in the right order to produce the desired outcome? So there are several aspects to keep in consideration. The first of them is the difference between inputs. So far we we defined the input pin of objects as input. They are technically called inlets. And we can distinguish between two categories. We have hot inlets and called inlets. There is not a graphical representation of this difference, but we know that the leftmost inlets are hot, while the non-leftmost are called a hot inlet will always produce an output. So if we send a number inside this float object, let's move this comment. Okay. If we send an input inside float object inside its hot inlet, it will produce an output as we can see from the console. But what happens if we switch input? it will produce no output. That's because called inlets are used to store values inside an object. And if we move the mouse over the called inlet, we can see how it accepts float numbers and stores them with no output. This aspect will force a specific order of execution. If you're sending numbers to a called inlet, the patch execution will stop at the level of this float object, like in this example, of course. So if we want to move on with the branch we're working on, we'll need to send a bang, for instance, to a hot inlet. In this way, I can enter any number inside float and then output it in the console. Here we have it. Now we can put into practice what we've learned about hot and cold inlets by making a numerical counter. We can use a float and a plus one object. Now if we send a bang to the float object, it will output a zero value since it is initialized to zero. The output value is sent to a plus object, plus one, to its hot inlet. Then we take the output and we send it to the called inlet of float. We can then use a float box to visualize the incremented number. Every time we send a bang to the float object, it will increment the stored value by one. So zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and so on. If you want to reset the counter, you can send a message with the zero to its hot inlet. So reset and start counting, reset. The next aspect to keep in mind is connection order. Here I opened the previous example, the previous PD patch as a text file. You can use any text editor if you're on Mac, but you'll probably have to convert your patch into plain text first. Anyway, we're not really interested in the way PD creates a file, but what we're interested in is the connection order. Every time you create a new connection, PD will add a string containing all info about the connection type. And as you keep going and you add new connections, new strings will be added. So the order of execution related to connections is defined by the order at which those routings were created. I want to make an experiment, so let's create four messages. We can write hello, how, are, and you. And I want to bang these messages with the following order, that is hello, you, are, how. Then I can use a print object to visualize these messages in the console. We can hit bang, hello, you are how. Because as we already know, PD follows the creation order. And you might say, why not simply use the right connection? 
Well, you're right because I can simply connect hello first, then how are you. And if we clear the console and we hit bang once again, it will show these messages in the right order. Hello, how are you? The thing is, we're now working with a very small and simple patch. Think of yourself working on a very big project with hundreds and hundreds of connections, objects. To keep track of everything, it's very difficult and time demanding. So what we can do to force the right order of execution, well, not the right order, the a fixed order of execution, is to use the trigger object. You can simply write T. If we take a look at its help file, we can see how uh, it outputs its input from right to left because of the hot called inlet paradigm. At this point, we can send the bang to the trigger object. And since we are receiving a bang and we want to route that bang to four messages, we type B, 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 and B. The order is from right to left, so this rightmost outlet goes to hello, then how are you? Since I don't like crossed connections, we can change the order of these messages. This will not affect the uh, patch execution. It's just to keep everything neat and clean. Now, if we hit bang, maybe we can clear the console first. Hello, how are you? And no matter what is the connection order of these virtual cables, I could say, uh, hello, you, how are. Let's clear the console. And if I hit bang, it will always show, hello, how are you? Because the trigger object is forcing the execution order from right to left. Another tricky example is the following. What if I want to add 10 to itself? So I want to make 10 plus 10, 20, right? If I hit the message, the result is 10. That's because if we send the uh, 10 message to the hot inlet first, it will instantly trigger the operation. And it won't have time to think about what am I receiving on the rightmost inlet? So the right connection is first we send 10 to the called inlet. And then in this way, the plus sign is uh, saving this content. And then we trigger the operation to 20. If you want to use the trigger object, you can do this. So trigger, float, float. Thanks to trigger, we can now send a first 10 to the called inlet of uh, the addition sign, and then we can trigger the execution. When a message is sent inside a PD patch, it can trigger further events. It can produce a cascade of messages or events or actions. This creates a tree-like structure. So this system processes numbers or data, whatever, in a depth-first manner, completing one branch before moving to the next one. So the last topic for today is called depth-first message passing. If we take a look at this example, we can see there are two main branches. This first one with multiplication, addition and further addition, and this one with a multiplication and a subtraction. So the trigger object will trigger the incoming float with an instantaneous sequence of number. So it will uh, output 15, 15, F15 15, uh, with a very, very rapid pace. The first branch stops here with this addition because we're sending the result of this operation to a called inlet. To move further, we need the trigger object to output the float to this hot inlet. But at this time, we're going to stop here with this subtraction for the same reason. So we need PD to execute this last branch to finally produce an output. To put this in easy words, we can say that the initial action is marked as finished, so it will produce the final result only when 
all subsequent actions within that branch that tree structure have been finalized. And this fourth episode has also reached the end. If you found this content useful, please join my Patreon page, subscribe to my channel, leave a comment, a like, whatever you want to do, and I'll catch you in my next video. Ciao, ciao!